Hey everyone, if you want to start out every game with the lead, you need to win lane. Winning lane every game seems hard, but it's not as hard as you think, it just comes down to those fundamentals. So today, we're going to have a simple video where I show and explain 5 of these fundamentals on a smurf in gold. While doing that, I'm going to point out the mistakes enemy laner is making, which contributed to why they're getting smashed so hard. So let's not waste any time and jump right in. The matchup I'm going to be playing is Brand vs Sandra. Don't worry though, the concepts we're going to cover will apply to all matchups. But to start out the lane, watch how both of us position for the first few seconds. I'm standing off to the side here because I know Lissandra might try to get a CS and hit me with her Q at the same time. I don't have that luxury unless she stands on top of the CS I'm going for, so I just worry about grabbing my last hit without taking any damage. After that, I don't have any last hits to grab and my W is up. Why haven't I tried to hit her with it yet? This brings us to fundamental number one, which is when going for skill shots, you want to wait for them to go for a last hit. This does two things. First, it increases the chances that you will hit the skill shot, and second, it pressures the enemy's last hit. If they choose to dodge your ability and give up the minion, at least you profited in some way. This is a very, very important fundamental. It also applies when going for kills. If you know they are in kill range, you wait for them to go for a minion, then look for the kill. If they don't go for it, you profit in the same way. Anyways, the Lissandra actually has some decent movement here, grabbing the minion with her Q and walking out of my W, but I also didn't use W at max range, so I misplayed it. Either way, good movement from her for the Zelo. Alright, now that my W is down, I'm just standing away from my minion so Lissandra doesn't hit me with Q and focus on CSing. Those last 15 seconds seem standard and normal. Well, Lissandra was actually misplaying that entire time. There was no visible punish for it, so it's hard to tell, but let's watch it again. This is actually fundamental number two, which is knowing when to auto attack. Look how I'm positioned for most of these 15 seconds. I'm standing very close to her range minions, basically acting like I'm going to harass her with auto attack. It makes her play pretty scared this whole time. If this was high elo, if I ever walked close to her minions, they would walk up and trade auto attacks with me, because their minions would attack me while mine wouldn't be in range to attack them. So by playing so passive and not punishing me for being so far up, she missed out on potential 1 trades. Of course, if she actually went to trade with me, I would just back up and not auto since I know I would lose. But against a low elo player, they definitely would get confident and walk up too far, so you have to know when to auto attack back. Autos on mages might not seem like a lot of damage, but they add up fast. Alright, moving on now to fundamental number 3, which is just playing the level 2 right. You need to know how to play it if you are the first to hit level 2, or if they hit level 2 first. In this situation, I'm going to be hitting level 2. I know I'm about to hit it because it's my 7th minion. Let's focus on how I handle this first, then we'll talk about Lissandra. As I'm about to hit level 2, pay attention to my movement here. I'm not walking up too far, because then it might just scare her off. But as that 7th minion gets low, I click forward, moving up, getting a head start before it's in last hit range. Then as soon as it's very low, I right click it and cancel my auto animation the moment it's thrown to start moving in. So the concept here is being ready to use the level 2 advantage while also not scaring them off. Most of the time in low elo, I don't see anyone ready to use their level 2 advantage to get a 1 trade, or you can even get a kill. But anyways, now I'm moving in with my level advantage, I'm coming at her at a diagonal to cut her off as she runs the tower, I hit her with my W first, and now I need to land my Q to stun her. This is a little skill shot trick, but when you see them move like this, basically a back and forth motion real quick, the most reliable way to hit this skill shot is just throw it down the middle. So this is a good example of how some things seem like good mechanics, but it's really just game knowledge. Throwing my skill shot down the middle didn't take any skill, it was just a concept, and now you have that knowledge to take into your next game. Alright, so as I stun her, she hits level 2, so I phase rush away with my hard 1 trade. I have no abilities left, so I don't want to let her trade back. But now let's talk about how to play when they will hit level 2 first. If we go back to right before I hit 2, and pause, notice there are no low health minions for Lissandra, so she doesn't need to be up this far anyways. She should see I'm about to kill my 7th minion, which is just the first minion on the second wave, and be ready to back up to avoid the situation. But if we let it play, as soon as I hit 2, she's running away, then if we pause again here, now she's facing me. This right here shows that she was not thinking at all about this situation and didn't see it coming. Even if she's surprised by my level 2, she should be seeing it and running away. But like I said, in this elo, nobody uses their level 2 advantage, so they aren't punished for it to teach them. And all she had to do was back up and stay in experience range until one minion dies and gives her level 2. This only took 2 seconds. So if she backed away when she was supposed to, she could have hit level 2 as I went in for the trade, but I would be in her minions. So she would win if she rooted me. That's how a high elo trade would go. In high elo, I would have one second to abuse my level 2. 
If I tried to force it too hard, they would be watching that one minion die for their own level 2, and they would go in and turn the trade around with their minion advantage. But getting back into laning now, I'm collecting last hits while my abilities are on cooldown. Until right here, when I think Lissandra is about to last a minion, and she backs up instead. Again, decent movement by her for this elo. With my W down, I have no way of trading since my Q will be blocked by minions, so I'm just focusing on last hits again. She should be trying to harass me with her Q while my W is down for 10 seconds, but she's playing too safe and is missing these trading opportunities. She knows I only had Q and W, so she could just stand behind her minions and poke me with Q when I went for last hit. Now I'm going to hit level 3, and this basically falls into the level 2 fundamental from earlier. I hit Lissandra with my W, and then I hit level 3. Now if we pause here, you should see why her positioning is a big problem. She's facing me, just like before, when she's ablaze from my W and at a level disadvantage. Luckily for her, my Q barely gets clipped on this minion next to me because the Q was definitely going to hit. Then I would follow up with E and passive for a huge chunk. But just like before, it's back to collecting last hits while my abilities are on cooldown. This brings us to fundamental number 4, which is warding. First, you want to ward when there are no last hits to get. You don't want any minions dying while you leave. That's why I grab the cannon and then go ward. Then, you have to choose a side and position based off three things. Who the enemy jungler is, where your jungler is, and what side of the lane you want to be hovering. The enemy jungler here is Hecarim, so I know he's going to full clear his bot side, then go top. And I know he needs to gank from behind me, so I drop the ward here. Also, my jungler is top side. So what this sets me up to do is, hug my top side safely, so if I get ganked from top, I have an early alert. And if I get ganked from bot, I can kite to my jungler for an easy counter gank. This is what you want to do every time. But as laning continues, I grab the rest of this wave, so the wave is going to crash on the tower. As it's crashing, Lissandra makes a huge mistake. She walks up like this with no minions and is a level down. This is one of the biggest mistakes she can make. She has literally nothing going for her here to win this trade. So I punish and land a full rotation on her and chunk her to about 40%. You can never ever walk up when your wave dies and the enemy laner has a minion wave, even if they only have like 3 minions. You will always lose. But now that I have no abilities and she's under tower, I walk out of vision to dissuade any kind of jungle gank and then see Hecarim on the scuttle. Since I know he can't see me, I easily take it with my W and Q. And you know he really took a hit mentally. Junglers throw games over scuttle all the time, and I stole it because I'm pushing my lane and had proper vision. But now that I know where he is, I'm going to switch sides of the lane, while the wave pushes into me. And this brings us into fundamental number 5, push or freeze. Pushing puts the most pressure on the lane is what you want to do most of the time. But knowing Hecarim is behind me forces me to do the second best option, which is to let it push to me and freeze it. Lissandra has no potions and is low on mana, while I have two potions and two cookies. So she has no kill pressure on me at all, with the wave pushing to me. This will force her to make a decision, recall and miss a bunch of minions, or try to get the wave shoved in at risk of dying. So I'm going to collect last hits and when my W is up, I'm basically going to look for kill windows whenever she goes for last hit. Sadly, I barely miss this one. Now it's back to making sure the wave stays frozen until my W is up again. And now that I'm level 5 and the wave is trimmed down a bit, I can walk up like this and zone her completely. Especially when the cannon is going to die soon. Well, she doesn't realize that she just needs to recall and take the lost here with the bad wave and walks up to auto me. So I hit her with E, then Q using the same concept as before, then follow up with ignite and W for the kill. So by freezing, she was forced to make a decision. She would lose something from both, but she chose to overstay, so now she would lose minions and die instead of just losing minions if she recalled before. Alright guys, so those are the 5 simple fundamentals that will improve your laning by a ton. If you can get those down, then refine them. You'll win every single lane in low elo, and start off every game with a lead. But that's going to bring us to the end of this one, we hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.